But coming back with the same people, that's going to be monstrous. I mean, it's going to be a really big deal, you know. Um, I don't want to sound maudlin or sentimental about it, but I mean, let's face it. Those were two of the greatest years of my career. And if it wasn't for those two, not only were they two of the best. I mean, like, I mean, I had great years in WCW as well. TNA, I'm having a phenomenal time. But if it wasn't for those two, I mean, two and a half, three years that I was there, there wouldn't have been any career afterwards. If I wouldn't have reinvented myself there and been given the freedom to reinvent myself by Pauly, then I'm, you know, I may still be some, you know, I may be producing for someone or writing or booking or anything that I don't want to be doing instead of performing, or maybe just be, you know, some indie guy. So because of those couple years there, I was given the opportunity to develop a character that, you know, it's been 10 years now. And I'm still, I feel like I can still go another 10 or 20, you know. Hell, if Funk's doing it 60, I figure I can do at least a 54, you know. So. Five minutes, 16 seconds. Five minutes, 16 seconds. And so, yeah. And then sometimes they would have to, they, were, they would replay, you know what I mean? Depending on how much fun I was having or how many beers I had in my pocket or, or if I tripped and got my leg caught. I, I was walking on top of the chairs. I got my leg caught in one of the chairs. The chair closed on my leg. I was sitting there for two minutes trying to get my leg out of the damn chair. So I had to play the music over again, you know? But yeah, the, entry, uh, the best part about the entrance is, is that I'm having just as much fun as they're having. And then when I started drinking their, uh, then I, the one I started pouring beer in their mouths, you know what I mean? You had to change it up a little bit, you know what I mean? And then when somebody thinks, oh my God, the same man might pour beer down my throat tonight. Like when everybody was in this building, they thought they were as much as part of the show as the guys that were in the ring. And that's what, uh, that's what helped get us there. Physically, I would bend down, I would bend over and touch my toes before I went out to the ring. That was that was my pre-match workout. I used to get a pop for that for the boys. They were like, ah, oh, Sam Man just did his pre-match workout. Everybody would be like, what? He played to see me, bent over and touch his toes. That was, that was my pre-match workout. My big stretch. But my music would start playing, I'd bend over and touch my toes. Todd Gordon had a lot to do with, I remember Paul telling Todd Gordon, listen, I know Hack's your boy, but he just doesn't have it. I was supposed to be a baby face running, doing run-ins. Um, this was uh, right when Paulie got the book from uh, Eddie, and, and I was getting booed. I was a baby face doing run-ins, and, and getting heat. Not, not heat because you did something that they hated, they, heat because you just sucked. And, Ty, and Paul was telling Todd, uh, this is your boy. I know he's your boy and everything, but he just doesn't have him. Paul's, and Todd's like, listen, well, why don't you just go out and let him be hat? You know, Paul's like, what do you mean? He goes, well, let, it started out with a cigarette. He goes, let him go out with a cigarette. So for a couple months, I just came out with a cigarette. And then I would sit in the back. I'd have a 30-pack of beer. I'd be drinking beer. And then one day, Todd got, Todd, Todd got Paul to let me come out with a beer. And then, then the Sam and character was really hit. You know what I mean? And then, I don't, and then I'm not really sure the time frame, but we're, um, I, I, well, I was looking for Terry Funk again. That's what it was. I'm looking for something different to do. Nobody else out. Nobody else comes. Nobody else comes through the crowd. You know what I mean? So I was just looking for looking for something different to do. So I would come out from different places in the building. You know what I mean? Instead of everybody looking down the runway, I'd like to come in through the front door and then just and then it's the best when it's the best when everybody's looking that way. And then you hear a couple people, they hear like the people that are standing up there looking for you out here. And then they start to hear the cheer behind and everyone's like, what goes on? And then you just look at the sea of people all start to turn around. And it like flows across the building. Everybody turns around to see, to see, to see. And then you stick your cane up and then the place explodes, you know? It was a great, great feeling, you know? Terry Funk again, kid, you gotta do something different to separate yourself. Here's another cheap plug. The hardcore effing homecoming shirt the Sandman is wearing right now is available at hardcorehomecoming.com. And the stick he is caressing is not. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a coming to the ring by the Blue Meanie and the Musketeer. Forget Raven stealing not only the wife, I mean, 
ex-wife of the Sandman, but also brainwashing his then young son, you know, Tyler. It's obvious to everyone in here that I got twice the pop that you did, because I am a much bigger star.